we were talking about our sleeper bowl team where Sexy P traded away. Nah, fuck our sleeper bowl team. We're, we're out of it. Traded we lost. away Michael Carter for Tyler Boyd without any of the other team's permission. Without asking I any said one it. of us. You didn't ask a That's single one of us. That's not true. Tony. Yeah, you asked me, and I said, no, I don't I, want Boyd. I you, asked Tony. You, you asked what did you say? Me. I said no. No, I that's not true. You I, never said no. You you proposed it as if we got offered. No, that, not I didn't. I said that. I sent out a bunch of trades and I listed them all off, and that was one of them. That's just insane. That's a bad trade. <sighs> I didn't think you is, sent that out. I don't there. see why that's a bad trade. It's a bad trade. How? Just look at it. Carter, Carter's a beast. Are there vetoes in this league? There should be veto yeah. on your own trade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, look. my lover. It's a bad trade. It's not, I don't like Michael it. Michael Carter. We could have got more. No, we couldn't. Michael Carter. Yes. No, we couldn't. I, I think we yes. could Yes. You wait a week. We probably couldn't have, but I just would have rather have not fucking done the trade. What are we going to do? Have three running backs on our bench doing nothing? And yeah. then have Dude, this Sammy is what, Watkins this in is our what starting what fucking lineup? happens. Yeah. You need depth. We start three. Someone's going to get hurt. It's going to be bye weeks. We need to put Carter in. I'd rather put a better player in our starting lineup. It doesn't matter what you rather fucking do. Yeah. This is a team fucking effort. Mm, I'd, rather you, I'd rather now. you not trade him. Kind of matters now. This, exactly. this feels worse than the fucking Lumberland DM. <laughs> I don't see how that's a bad trade at all. <laughs> this is the Lumberland. You ever heard of leverage, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Ooh, welcome, Mike, to some bash talk. Um, we have. Yelled at Sexy enough for his atrocious trade that he made. Great trade. We are sitting here in week two, and I got to pull up my lineup. But we're going to go through each of our lineups and just talk about some of the sit-start decisions that we have uh, for Bash Week 2 matchups. And that's really it. So if anyone wants to start off and, and run through some some tough decisions that are weighing on your mind heavily, whether in life or your matchups, you can start. Mr. I'll go. Tony. I'll go because uh, I think my team is pretty straightforward. There is one decision I have to make, and that is, am I putting Alan Lazard into my starting lineup? Do we trust him coming off this minor injury? And then what do we think of the, about the Packers offense? Because it looked putrid last week. Big bounce back? Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, I've been saying it kind of since the beginning of the season that I think Aaron Rodgers is just kind of playing football because he has to, because he signed a contract now. I don't think he cares anymore. Ever since Devontae left, he's like... His best friend left him. He's heartbroken. He doesn't even care about the game. Although I'm he nervous have a about shit week one last year too. Yeah, I know. I'm just. I think he'll be fine in the end. Obviously, he's Aaron Rodgers. But I just. Did, I saw an interview from him just last seems night. Off. Yeah, he was. He was very much like, yeah, it's my job to like get these young guys up to speed. But they're they're young. You know, it's going to take some time. He seemed like very relaxed. It was almost as if he was saying like, yeah, this is not going to work right now. Yeah, but like. There's nothing I can... Like, this is the team that this front office fucking trotted out on the field like, with. We're not going to be a Super Bowl team, but, like, I'm going to go out there and play my best every week. I'm the best quarterback in the world, and yeah. this is the piece of shit that you serve me for dinner. Yeah, it was... It, it's ugly out there for them. Um, I do think... So, there's two There's two things I look at at the wide receiver position right now for them. Everybody really stinks that they trotted out last week. Like, Watkins not going to be a thing. Cobb's not going to be a thing. All those guys that we were, like, taking late shots on. I think Lazard is actually going to be pretty fucking good when he gets on the field. Ooh, yeah. I think uh, Christian a, Watson, too, is going to be a player by the end of the year. That first the first play that he dropped on that pass, like, it wasn't good, and Rodgers was pissed about it, but Rodgers also understands that there wasn't a single player on the field that could do what Watson did, like the double yeah. move to get by the defender. It's like Sammy Watkins straight up looked like Eddie Lacy on the fucking outside of the hashes lining up, so it was like, Shit. I don't know. <laughs> but Animal thinks he's going to be Shit. some great player. I just said this week, starting lineup, just single back. Yeah, so I, I think we'll see Watson and Lazard emerge. I think Lazard's just going to be shoved into a place where it's like he's going to almost give him the Devontae Adams treatment. It's not going to work out that way, but like he's going to do that because everyone else on the field stinks. Is he yeah. back at practice? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think I saw he's most likely going to play. I actually have to decide if I want him on my bench. <clears throat> well, yeah, last I saw he was limited. Who are you he's still like, limited? Who are you deciding? Yeah, on? so the guys I'm uh, considering playing him over, I have uh, Michael Carter and Jeff Wilson in my flex spots. I kind of don't want to play Lazard over either of those guys just because Wilson and Carter seem like safer plays. I could also go Lazard over Ayuk, who I have in my wide receiver three spot. I don't know if I'd want to have like Ayuk and Wilson, so I feel like you know, got to pick your Wilson battle there first. Yeah, I don't like stacking uh, two 49ers in a game that has a low total. Yes. Total's only at 40. There may not Agreed. be a whole lot of touchdowns going on. I don't really know if Seattle's going to keep pace with the Niners either. So I feel like they could do a lot of running. So th that makes me kind of want to lean with Wilson over Ayuk. 
but it also feels weird playing Lazard over Ayuk. Dude, to be completely okay. honest, I, I think what I would do is if that's my lineup, I got a weird feeling about Jeff Wilson, man. I do. I feel like I, I know. Would play I know Lazard you're like Wilson. you're so down on Jeff Wilson. Yeah, I just. Uh, like, I'm going to be okay if I miss out on the Wilson train. I don't know if i throw Lazard over him, but if I were to make a move, and, like, I kind of like the idea of diversifying that offense a little bit because, you know, if they just stink, then your whole team kind of goes yeah. down with it. I might go Lazard over Wilson. Like, sure, like, Wilson will get you eight points without a doubt, but I think Lazard has a chance to catch, like, seven for 100 and a touchdown, where I don't know if I believe Wilson could do there, that. There's been times, though, where Wilson has been the guy, and he's flashed, like, so much fantasy production. Like multiple touchdowns in a game, he's he breaking off long runs. He's catching passes. He has the upside to be so fucking good. Yeah, I just don't know if I believe that. You don't. You I don't know you if like the upside's like even there. I or... love Jeff Wilson too much. I, yeah, hundred percent, like, I do. Yeah, I. I, uh, I love Jeff Wilson to a fault. I think I ranked him as like my RB twenty one this week, maybe something in that range. So like I'll play him obviously if I have him, but I I do have concerns that we're just gonna get out there and like if Wilson doesn't come out and rip off like six to seven efficient plays right if he starts off like six for 13 i wouldn't be surprised if we just start seeing them mix in these other backs and before you know it wilson gives you like a three-point game maybe i mean i think if anything it's it's debo that's going to be taking away carries but you know maybe trey lance i don't know if like i don't i don't know if tdp is anything i don't know if jordan mason's anything so what's your gut say for your lineup you're gonna sit lazard probably yeah, because it's also, he's he's the one coming off the injury. Like, I would hate myself more if I played Lazard and it was like, yeah, he, he was just super limited in this game. Like, they didn't even use him. Like, I should have I should have known that. Yeah. Meanwhile, if I sit Jeff Wilson, I'm like, that's what I saw coming. So after all that, you're going to trot out two 49ers with a total of 40 and a half for the game? I think so, yeah. All right. Interesting. I feel like I thought we were going to get somewhere here, but no, <laughs> I guess not. I think it's you good. guys make valid points. I, I just, would just, I would definitely have Lazard in there, I think, over one of those guys. Whoever it is, you choose, but I feel like I would have Lazard over one of those 49ers. Okay. I mean, by game time, I might make that. It depends I probably on if will Lazard's going to, you know, uh, what the news is on Lazard, obviously. Right. It's Thursday right now. We're filming. So I got to say, I, I feel a lot better about my bash team after week one because two guys that I had on my bench. Like, Julio and Darrell Henderson were both, like, my 11th and 12th round picks. And now with Godwin out, Julio is, like, a pretty good flex spot, Darrell Henderson. And I'm deciding between, basically, those two, Julio, Darrell Henderson, Lazard, and Darnell Mooney. Like, those are two bench players for me now, Lazard and Mooney. So I feel like I've kind of accumulated a little bit of depth action going here. And I'm pro- I mean, I think I feel like Darrell Henderson is basically a must start against Atlanta right now because yeah. they don't have a running back behind him. I guess my decision is between Julio, Lazard, and Mooney. Now, I'd probably sit Julio. I feel like really only because of the injury reports that came out. I mean, the dude. Oh, I, he didn't practice on Wednesday. But that's just old Julio being fucking getting probably better in treatment. Yeah. It probably that's is. That's just him getting rest and be like, yo, I need this for my body. And they're like, all right, Julio, it's cool because we know you're fucking Julio Jones. You've been doing this for however many years now. Yeah. Brady I, I, didn't practice either, I know. Yeah, because he's Tom Brady and yeah. he's Tom yeah, That's the same shit. Tom Brady's yeah. going through some personal shit. Though. You get to a, no, but you get to a certain level in the NFL where you're at such a status of a veteran and, and all this. Like you don't need to practice. I'm not really too worried about Wednesday practice. Need your playbooks, you know. Yeah, Julio. Uh, Julio only played 52 percent of the snaps last week. He looked good. Godwin's obviously out now. I do think this makes Russell Gage a player again. Like I think yeah. people have kind of forgot about him because he didn't have the week one, but now he's got the Godwin role. What about Rashad Perriman? Uh, I hate him, but like he's there. He's a guy. I saw he had like 91 air yards in week one, but he, had zero he, got, he got the big zero targets. Receptions. But like, yeah, he didn't catch him. Yeah. I don't, eh. He's I'm not saying, like, I with about. Chris Godwin out. And like yeah, maybe. Julio, I think he's, know. like, the clear four there because it's think Evans, Julio, Gage, and then think Gage over? Uh, Gage got the contract this offseason. Yeah. I feel like they want to use him in that Probably slot right. role. Yeah. Um, well, but Mooney, like Mooney's Brady's another guy that I feel like in the same situation as Russell Gage. Like, he had the bad week one, but, like, that was – they were in a hurricane, so I didn't expect anything from the passing game. And every other game Mooney's yeah. basically played, he's operated as the one and gotten mm-hmm. eight to ten targets. So I feel like this could be a really big bounce-back game for him. I do, I guess, question Green Bay, the pace of that game. It's all it's going to be like running backs on both sides, back and forth. Jair Alexander is awesome. Should be an ugly-ass game. Yeah, I probably don't want to play Mooney. Um, so for me, it's like Julio or Lazard, and I think I'd play Julio over Lazard. I would, too. I would as well. Absolutely. I actually think I'd go Lazard there. Really? Really? Yeah. So you'll start Ayuk over him. Ayuk over yeah. Lazard and Lazard over Julio, so that means you'll start Ayuk over Julio? Yeah. I, mean, I, I think I would have those guys ranked. I think I'd have that completely flipped. Well, I, honestly, I think Ayuk and Lazard, I have, like, pretty neck and neck. I'm just going with Ayuk because, as of right now, I don't know 
the complete status of Lazard. I don't really know the complete status of Julio. I, I, I do think I lean towards that. It is just that veteran day off or whatever, but it is. Yeah. I'm not worried about it. We'll see his practice reports. You guys will see this on Friday. We're filming this on Thursday morning. So we only have Wednesday's practice reports to go off right now, but I think Julio will be fine. It'll be limited today or whatever and be fine by Sunday. The my, Honestly, the only hole in my lineup right now is probably just Mac Jones. Cause my first, yeah, my first three picks were Herbert, Barkley, Devonte Adams, and all three of those hit pretty big week one. Mac Jones is my QB two is the flop because I only have Zach Wilson as my three. I could pick Flacco up off the wire. Mac Jones against Pittsburgh though. Pittsburgh's D look great, but obviously Watt's going to no, be TJ out for this Watt. week. Yeah, all TJ Watt. I still don't. Uh, I don't know if it's all TJ Watt. I also think that's just like a team. Well, him thing. and Fitzpatrick, but like the you know, Steelers are just like they a have good a very good team. Obviously, yeah, I think Cam Hayward got hurt too. But did he? Yeah, but the yeah. TJ Watt put, putting that pressure on the quarterback constantly is a huge. Yeah, I can't play Flacco loss. at Cleveland over fucking. Mac Jones, but yeah, that's that's a really the only hole I have. I did pick up uh, Jordan Mason. I saw that. I was going to ask how much you spent on him. I think three dollars or some shit. Nice. Yeah, I just figured yeah, five dollars. There was three other bidders on it. We get uh, my waiver wire, so we had Jalen Warren go off for twenty six bucks, which I thought was kind of crazy given the fact that now nah, she's definitely going to play. Well, in Animals League, he went off for a hundred. Yeah. Are you Stup- serious? That was your league? Stupid yeah. ass Bush, right? Yeah. That was Bush? <laughs> that was Bush. Bush. Bruh. We made fun of him in our sleeper chat. Don't worry. Well, actually, up. they were making fun of him. I came in like hours later. I was like, oh, we're making fun of Bush? <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> <I'm in. laughs> Davis Maddock spent $11 on Damian Williams, who was the running back that Atlanta started who got hurt and left and Cordell went off. Yeah. I mean, it's 11 bucks. Could not terrible. It's just a weird player to want to yeah, pick yeah. up right now, though. Very odd. Yeah, maybe he knows something. It's so hard with these deep benches, though. Like, how many opportunities are you Dude, really so going to get to spend I on players that you like? I was thinking about this last night. This is, like, the bash is my nightmare of a, of a league for me based off of my history. The last time we had a 20-team, 20, like, you know, bench, 20-roster spot draft, I went 0-13. The last you'll see this one. Hopefully there won't be an 0-12 bag. We'll see. All right. Let's do this. Animal. Looking good, buddy. Oh, we start now? Now we start. Yeah, well, one in four, one in 13? Was you my, went, you lost week 13. one. Yeah, so I lost week one. And oh, my shit. team, I'm looking at it, I'm going, shit. Here we my, go again. My depth <laughs> is shit. I'm looking at the waiver wire, and there's no one there. I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, how much did Cooper Cooper Rush go off in your old leagues? Um, I feel like not that much. Yeah. I needed it. Oh, no, it happened in my league. Gooden has uh, Deshaun Watson and Matt Ryan, and he just bid $5 on Cooper Rush and didn't get him. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? You didn't, how did he not get him? Because somebody else bid seven. Oh. He went off. I needed a QB3, and this was, like, the problem. Tuesday night, it was, like, midnight or some shit, and I was about to go to sleep, and I was like, fuck, I forgot to set my waivers for, like, my 19 fucking leagues. So I couldn't, like, pay attention to what was going on. I didn't realize I needed a QB3 there. Cooper Rush went off for zero dollars. Like, all I had to do was bid, and I would have fucking got him, and I missed out on him. I mean, I, I wanted to pick up Cooper Rush because I don't have a QB3 either, but, like, he doesn't um, he doesn't fix any of the bye week problems that I have later in the season. You know, like Matt Ryan's not going to be there for week fourteen. This was just this was just for like I need a QB three in case over the next like four weeks or something. Like Mac Jones re injures his back, and I'm like I just I'm going to be playing fucking Alan Lazard as my super flex. So it's like I know he'll give us Cooper. Uh, Cooper Rush also had like a big um, a big game or two last year so it's like you know he could do something right it's like the jeff wilson of, of quarterbacks right now basically uh, but how many weeks does he got in him i feel like dax like three back. Four. Yeah. yeah but that's what i'm saying like it, i just need it for it's almost insurance for a month yeah at least a, exactly you have a month you have to worry about it i don't right even know why i'm talking about this because i didn't fucking get him anyways but yeah those are my decisions i think i'll probably stick with what i have in my lineup right now I feel, i'm feeling a lot better about my bash team post week one than i was pre-week Good, one because i fucking need help yeah let's go we're here <laughs> to do that for you Help me, please. All right. Honestly, so my first thing is Alvin Kamara, rib injury. What's the deal? He's fine. He's fine. He's I think he's good. All right. I'm oh. starting him. Not, 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 not a problem. Here's where it gets uh, iffy. I have. I'm gonna put Jahan Dotson in this week. Um, I think he's gonna have, have another. Him? I think he's gonna run back a big week. Again. So he's against Detroit. I think it's a good matchup. Uh, I also have no one else to start. So <laughs> it's so kind of that. it's kind of a win win for me. Uh, you know, because I have DJ Moore, Christian Kirk as my other wide receivers. You also you have, have Alan you Lazard. You have Alan Lazard. I have Alan Lazard too. Yeah, but like, who are your flex plays? You want me to start Alan Lazard over Ayuk, but you wouldn't. I'm going to monitor over. and see what happens. I'll okay. start him in my flex over maybe Damian Pierce, but I don't even want to do that. You should do that. You think so? Yeah. The only thing is because we're playing against Denver. We have a decent Here's the run thing. defense. Based, based on, um, one, you guys looked atrocious on, as a run defense. I'm just throwing Rashad week one Penny, out. Rashad Penny put you in a coffin. Yeah, I'm throwing week one but out. But is Rashad Penny just 
that good. That was an undisciplined, I, unprepared team. Rashad Penny l- looked great. Look great. He, he looked really awesome, good. dude. After week one, I think like you have to play. You have to play it cautiously with Damian Pierce. Like well, it wasn't. It gonna, wasn't like fifty fifty game him. script. I do think that, but he's the fact get involved. Rex like Burkett was up. so far ahead of Pierce in terms of just like everything that it's like I don't know how you can have confidence putting him in right now. I have too many running backs right now. Is my problem. You're just so rich with running backs. Yeah, it's not but even they're true. not good running backs. Yeah, just, all the ones on your bench <laughs> suck. It's not like, well, even true. My starting your your bench is only Mike Davis. Well, yeah, but my starting lineup is four running backs. It's a problem. I have Chubb Henderson. Pierce and Kamara right now. So I'm basically trying to figure out my flex spot. Is it going to be Pierce? Is it going to be Dotson? Is it going to be Lazard? Like, you know, I, I think you're sitting in a pretty good spot. I think, um, I think you probably start Dotson in the wide receiver spot. And personally, I would probably start Lazard over Pierce. As long as Lazard's back too. at practice yeah. and he's like good to go. I think That's you're lying. Probably what good. I will end up doing. Um, the one last thing is tempting. I don't think I'm going to do it, but Wentz and Matt Ryan starting Wentz over Ryan here. I know. They, they both have, the, like, juicy matchups, but I have the Jahan Dotson stack there. Wentz had a great week one. Matt Ryan didn't have the best week one, but he had a great, you know, it was a solid week. Yeah. He just I needs like to throw a so touchdown. Even. Like, Matt like, Ryan was a touchdown away from just, like, having an awesome week, basically. Yeah. yeah. I would still go with Matt Ryan. Feels safer. Carson Wentz can just melt down and yeah. destroy Feels my Feels safer. Team. I do think, though, Matt Ryan, like, my only concern is uh, – that game script is like this is going to be another like twenty seven carry Taylor game probably yes. against Jacksonville and that that means like Matt Ryan needs to be hyper efficient in the red zone and like walk away with two or three like needle touchdowns and if he doesn't do that it gives you like fourteen or fifteen yeah um, like Carson Wentz has the upside for sure here I'm gonna be honest I'm yeah I might throw Wentz in there I've been thinking about it yeah. Detroit does have what looks like one of the worst defenses in the league yeah they're gritty that's doesn't matter that's they're fine still, still bad uh, uh, all right well I'll think on that but I, I mean I'm probably I'm probably going to end up putting Wentz in there just for the the stack with dots and I so like I, you know I can just hopefully juice up my numbers a little bit there but I mean I'm not feeling confident at all I'm not feeling confident at all in your lineup either but I'm feeling confident in your chance to win a beautiful beautiful giveaway that we have from our friends over at pristine auction so this is, and this is like an insane description of what this is, so I'm just going to read it off for you guys. So we're going to be doing one giveaway per month that you can enter completely free. If you go to pristineauction.com, we'll put the link down below, and you use promo code BDGE when you sign up. You're going to get 10 free dollars to put towards your first purchase on that website, but you're automatically entered into this signed giveaway. And again, we're going to be doing one of these with a new piece every single month. This is an Odell Beckham Jr. signed Super Bowl full-size speed helmet inscribed SBLVI champs and first Super Bowl touchdown. Oh, okay. This is a Beckham. I'm not sure how this is a Beckham, but it's, it says, just, it's well, just a Super Bowl, just because it's red. Yes. It doesn't look like it's, it's a, Rams. But I think know. it was in, like a Super Bowl helmet, and then he yeah, signed Yeah, you can this. see the, the big O right there. So this thing is fucking beautiful. It's full size. Odell Beckham signed, first touchdown in the Super Bowl. Uh, head over to Pristine Auction. Thank you guys for that. They have, like, amazing auctions going off all the time. Memorabilia, jerseys, helmets, Whatever sports you're into, they got baseball, basketball, anything, probably fucking NASCAR, full-size cars, you know, all that kind of <laughs> they shit. They even got, like, uh, uh, drive like, it right to your house. <laughs> <laughs> they even got, like, movies and, and comics and a bunch of other Do cool. they, like, pop yeah. culture stuff? Yeah, pop culture collectibles. Yeah, yeah. I need to yeah. get a Zendaya. Like, Do you they, think they, they got like Zendaya shit Like, on Indiana there? Jones whip or something like that? Uh, not uh, maybe not, like, the whip, but, like, yeah. uh, some poster probably signed by Harrison Ford. Like, the, like the jacket that. Rocky wore in Rocky IV? Uh, you probably just buy a right hook from Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> and he comes to your house and feeds you it. Damn. Yeah, so go check out Pristine Auction. Unfortunately, they have no Zendaya merchandise up there. I'm going to have to talk to the team about that one. Use promo code BDGE. It'll get you $10 off your very first purchase on there and automatically entered into the giveaway. Sexual Judge Bankerson the fifth. Not, not the most difficult lineup decisions here. You just keep popping out children, man. You yeah. just keep moving up in generations. Every time <laughs> so I many speak generations. To you. <laughs> my biggest one's probably my QB2 slot. I got Trevor Lawrence or Marcus Mariota. I think that's easily Trevor Lawrence. Think so? Yeah, 100%. Falcons, I think, get absolutely clamped by the Rams. Rams have had so long to dwell over their loss uh, on Thursday to kick off the season. Rams are at home. McVay with the extra time yeah, is dangerous. Yeah, we're going to get the shit beat out of us. Yeah. Huh? McVay with extra time is, is dangerous. For also, I, I, I do think Falcons coming off kind of a heartbreaker does not help them. Like, I don't think that I don't think that's motivation. That's kind of, like, demoralizing. It's just another day. It's, I guess so. But, they're like, that, that has to be – I don't know if they're, like, used to it, Yes, though. they are. They do it every year. There's literally a meme. I know they do they it every year, but I – keep adding a I, new I, scoreboard <laughs> to it. I, I feel like you – the, the, 
the Falcons lost all these games, and it's just like they keep adding the new <laughs> scoreboard for like this 2022 season. Here all we right, go. Stop. It, keep going. You need uh, me to explain it to you some more. <laughs> My only other lineup decision is the massive hole I have at tight end. I have Cole Komet, Austin Hooper, and Noah Fant. I think you got to run it back with Komet. Uh, back he, with Komet. He's, kind of, he's kind of got a bad matchup, but who's your uh, Hooper, Komet, and who? Fant. Well, let's look at the matchups. Let's let's roll out how, did, how did these teams do against tight ends last week? Who did Green Bay play against? Uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah, they didn't do shit. Irv Smith didn't do a goddamn thing. Buffalo against the Rams. Uh, Tyler Higby got targeted 11 times. It's going to be a big Hooper bounce bike. No. Dropped him, so. <laughs> I, I feel like Hooper's <laughs> just guy not, animal. not a fantasy factor. No, I, I yeah. Cole Komet is like the lesser of all the evils, it feels like. Yeah. I feel like that's just going to be a huge problem for me all season long, yeah. deciding which tight end to throw out there. Did you think Which that end do I want to get zero points from yeah. me? <laughs> do you think that Cole Komet was like a, a good sleeper before the season? Before uh, week one? I wouldn't say I was necessarily high on him. I think he was, I was just at a point where there was no tight ends left and he was the only. So actually, let me ask you, do you, you're, how many redraft leagues are you in? Four. Four. Do you have uh, like a premium tight end in any of them? Yes. You do? I have Kelsey. I'm curious because I feel like some people, the people who have like Komet are always the ones I feel like that get kind of enamored by the flashy players when they're on the board rather than like taking a player like Kelsey or Andrews or whatever that are just like, you know, they're going to be solid for a long ass time. And I feel like you just have to relearn that lesson every fucking year. Yeah. I'll just wait on a 12th round tight end. And then you're like, cause when you're on the clock ready in a draft, next. you're like, I don't want to waste it on a tight end, but it always just feels way fucking better when you have one in your I'm lineup. Just, I'm yeah. ready for it. Ne- I'll tell you, I'll dominate next year's draft. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think if, if you thought Cole Komet was like a good tight end sleeper before the season, I don't think you write them off because of that week one game. The way I look yeah. at the, both the Bears and the 49ers is like they, they haven't played Yeah, there's like two game. games from last week that you can just completely write off and forget about because they don't mean anything. One well, of them is the 49ers and Bears is one of them game, the Broncos and the other is the Broncos the Falcons Seahawks, Seahawks game. game. For sure. You just sure. don't need to take away anything from either of those games. They're both irrelevant. Week, there's like Rocky Five never happened. Week one never happened. Yeah, I, I would say I'm still not – Fully out on Komet now because he did play 83% of snaps yeah. and round and route in pretty much every yeah, it was play. monsoon. Yeah, so. it's fine. Don't worry. He's going to get his. I've been trying to buy super low on Cole Komet in other redraft leagues. I think. I what think do you even offer? Exactly. Yeah, I can. I can offer like fucking Kenny Gainwell. He, a lot of people just drop him straight up. I was going to say like I. I, I feel yeah, like I've seen him offer Fab. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But I think he's a cool you know second tight end to have, especially. Um, I guess either either way, if you did spend up on tight end or not, it doesn't matter. Cole Komet, cool tight end too to have. All right. Well, those are our matchups. Uh, our first in real life event, by the way, for the bash for BDG three holders will be week six, uh, Sunday, October sixteenth. The Ravens come to MetLife Stadium to take on the Giants, so we're going to host like a little tailgate party. Um, we'll probably be joining forces with Snacks and anyone else of the Giants Twitter world. There'll um, be some people there. There will certainly be some people there, and we are going to uh, hold it down there. The game's at 1 p.m. We'll be showing up way earlier than that whenever the gates open up. We're going to set up a spot for everyone that uh, holds a pass, and you guys can come fucking hang out. So we're trying to give you, you know, I think there's like five weeks notice basically to get your shit in order. Uh, we don't necessarily have anything planned like before or after. I'm probably it's not going to get tickets. After. Yeah, I mean, if you guys want to go see the fucking Giants Ravens play, you're more than welcome. I'm probably not going to get tickets to the game. Uh, we're also like in the middle of fucking where is it Rutherford or some shit. Right, yeah, it's East Rutherford. There's really not much. There's a White Castle pretty close. <laughs> oh, there we go. Um, there you go. We're gonna go tailgate. And we're all gonna go to White Castle. <laughs> Honestly, after. I'm I would be down for a White Castle after. That would party. be kind of funny if like we just took a bunch we of our the fans, castle. like we were just hammered and we had just had, like 50 BDG <laughs> people, people in White Castle. Crazy. There's gonna be so much good food there. I feel like you're not gonna actually want White Castle. Storm in the castle, bro. Dude, let's do it. <laughs> do all right, it. there you have it. Our first in real life event is just White Castle, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck a tailgate. All right, uh, thank you all for hanging out with us today. If you have any sister questions, drop them down below. If you have any suggestions for Animal, because he's struggling over here, also drop them down below. Hit the button that looks like this. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and we will see y'all. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow on Q and Assault.